Um, the speaker today, Thomas Roth, um, works for a company called Landwork AG, um, a security and software engineering company located in Germany. And most recently, the work that he did is actually involving encryption in cloud environments. Today, different topic. He's going to be talking about Speedy, a web protocol, I think written by Google, right? Yeah. Google guys? Yeah. So it's called Analyzing Speedy, Getting to Know the New Web Protocol. Please join me in welcoming Thomas Roth. Thank you. Hey, hello. Welcome from me. Analyzing SPDY, or Speedy, how it's actually called, uh, next generation web protocol, maybe. So let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Thomas Roth. Uh, I'm mostly doing low-level programming in C, assembler, um, so mostly Unix stuff and on embedded systems and so on. Um, you can find me online at Twitter, just Stack Smashing, or my blog, stacksmashing.net. Um, first off, my journey to Vegas was a bit uh, crazy. I missed two connection flights and uh, was finally waiting for my back uh, to arrive. And what I actually got was uh, this, <laughs> which, is, which is basically this. And they, they were like, yeah, but don't worry. We, we, uh, we gave you a t-shirt with it so you won't be naked. And <laughs> I think I could actually wear this dress tonight. So um, due to that, I'm, I don't have my Linux machine with me, so I won't be able to um, present some of the practical stuff because, yeah, uh, I spent the last night hacking on this Mac to get it somehow working, but the internet connection here doesn't allow me to check out a 1.3 gigabyte Git repository, unfortunately, so bear with me, but I give my best. <laughs> so first, a small disclaimer. Um, Speedy is work in progress, so everything I talk about may change. Um, it's not yet a finished standard. We are at draft version 3. But Google is already using it like hell. And yeah, um, if you want to check the information, go to chromium.org and read the spec. Um, and please contact me if something is wrong or if I should clarify something. So, oh, 40 slide. Let's get started with what is Speedy? Um, Speedy is a new web protocol, a replacement for HTTP and was designed by Google to speed up the load time of websites. Um, it tries to fix the problems and limitations that were introduced uh, through HTTP because of the way we are using HTTP today. <coughs> SPDY is basically SCTP over TCP. SCTP is a stream control transmission protocol. It's basically uh, a way for, for transferring multiple data streams at the same time over a single connection. If you're actually using Chrome, uh, you are likely to use uh, Speedy already uh, with every Google service like Gmail or Google Apps or whatever. And yeah. <clears throat> so let's talk about the modern use of HTTP. HTTP was designed for downloading single files. It works great for downloading an ESO image. It works great for downloading a single HTML file. But our modern web experience is uh, mainly influenced by using many, many resources, like we have images on our websites, we have videos, we have CSS, we have JavaScript. And a single site actually takes 77 requests or even more uh, sometimes. And <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's pretty bad because HTTP does only allow pipelining. <clears throat> so you can't, do, uh, you can't request several resources at once and download them at the same time. If, a request, uh, if you request a resource from a web page, the request blocks. You won't be able to do anything until the server has finished your, uh, doing your request. So if you do a large search on Google or something, OK, Google actually has working infrastructure, so uh, don't worry. Um, if your request like, pushes on a, a large SQL query, your whole connection will just block, and you won't be able to continue loading the other resources that um, you may already could load if it wouldn't be blocking. <coughs> Our modern workaround for this is using multiple TCP connections, like 
uh, modern browsers mostly have six connections at the same time open just because HTTP is not able to handle this. And there are, oh, thank you. Sorry. Kind of nervous. <laughs> and, and, and there are also other circumventions like using multiple subdomains uh, <coughs> to allow the browser to load as many resources at once. Uh, this is something I actually saw at the customer site. He had like the dynamic one.example.com, dynamic two, static image, static data, because uh, their front page was loading with 140 requests. And it took on a modern browser like at least 30 seconds uh, without using this domain charting. <coughs> Another problem of HTTP 1.1 is the header handling. With every request you do, with every image request, with every CSS request, with every JavaScript request, you are sending the headers again and again. So if you have like four kilobytes of cookies in uh, your browser, you will resend them with every single request you do. There's also there's no way to actually compress the headers. We have content compression like gzip or uh, deflate encoding, but there's no way to actually compress the headers and that's an overhead from one kilobyte to multiple kilobytes per request. And that's a lot of bandwidth wasted. The next problem that actually really kicked in with all the Ajax stuff going on uh, is there's no server to client notific uh, notification functionality. The server side has no way to actually tell you that you've got a new mail. You have to continue polling and polling and polling the server side uh, until it says, yeah, you got a new mail, now stop going on my nerves. <coughs> so that brings us to SPDY. What is Speedy? As I said, Speedy was designed by Google for replacing HTTP, and if you're using Chrome for Gmail or something, you're already using it. Take a look in Wireshark, you will see a lot of cryptic stuff going on. And <coughs> it tries to lower the amount of TCP connections, as I said. Um, with Speedy, you will only use a single TCP connection. You won't be using like six at once or something. And it's not only the fact that blocking TCP connections are a problem, but it's also that the round trip time uh, really kicks in. If you use like six connections, you may have two connections which are decent fast enough for, for uh, being used as request pipeline. And you may also have several, uh, several connections which are just too slow to be used because of the different routes your package will take. <coughs> Speedy does also deliver server-side patch functionality. So if you have your Gmail window open, you don't uh, or always have a request in the background asking Google if you have new mail, but Google will actually tell you. And Speedy tries to keep the compatibility with all existing web applications by just replacing the web server and the user agent. So you, if you actually want to change your infrastructure to using Speedy, you won't have to change your applications, just maybe your load balances and so on. <coughs> so Speedy has built-in header compression. All headers sent, no matter what you do, every header you send via Speedy is Zlib uh, compressed using the deflate functionality. And <coughs> If you request like 10 resources, you can do the, re the request at once and Speedy will multiplex the TCP connections so you will, you will load uh, the, all the data at once and not only serial, serial, serial. It also enforces the client to support compression. Um, if you browse the web and just have, a, have some kind of uh, sniffer open, you will see that a lot of sites still don't use gzip compression. And that's pretty ugly and pretty bad because you don't want to load um, uncompressed data anymore. I mean, we have like dual core CPUs in mobile phones. Uh, I think we have enough uh, computation power for that. <coughs> so let's talk about the architecture of Speedy. Um, Speedy consists of two parts. Uh, there's the underlying framing layer and the HTTP layer. Um, the framing layer is pretty generic, even though Google says, hey, don't use it for other stuff. We, we built it for HTTP. It's also perfectly suited uh, for almost anything where you have to transfer multiple data sets at the same time. 
the HTTP layer is basically um, on top of the framing layer and just implements stuff like cookies and header stuff and so on. Uh, we will take a deeper look at that at a later point. <coughs> so a bit of terminology. Um, the framing layer uses a single TCP connection and this framing layer connection is called session. So if you go to a, to a website, you create a speedy session to this website. And on this session, you will transfer frames. And <coughs> these frames basically um, uh, are the representation of HTTP requests and responses in Speedy. Um, it's very generic, so uh, it doesn't feel like HTTP while working with it. Um, and you can actually use the framing layer for other evil stuff like cache poisoning and so on, which we'll see later. Um, multiple frames that uh, uh, that correlate to a single request are organized in streams. So uh, we basically, basically have the abstraction of having sessions. In a session, we have streams. And in a stream, we have multiple frames uh, constructing the data. <coughs> so a speedy session um, is a single TCP, or if you want to do it right, please use SSL at the presentation layer connection to the server. And uh, sessions are pretty dumb. It's basically just a small state object in your memory. Um, the only functionality that the session itself delivers is uh, you have persistent settings. Session-wide settings are basically um, predefined setting types like uh, upload bandwidth and download bandwidth, which can be used by the uh, server to optimize your, your, your requests. Like if you're going to a website and you say, hey, my download bandwidth is very limited, please give me a low bandwidth site like uh, no flash and so on. Um, that allows the uh, server to do optimization on that site. It also keeps track of stuff like round trip time and the maximum number of concurrent streams. So the server won't try to push you 10 resources at once if your browser may only can handle five because your um, memory on your mobile phone is very limited or whatever. The cool thing about the settings uh, are that they can be persistent. So uh, based on an origin policy like if the request comes from the same IP and the same user agent and so on, um, these settings are saved. There are also client side and server side settings, um, but one type of them is not yet used, but actually uh, already implemented, and we can do some nasty stuff using that. <coughs> so to the framing layer, there are two different frame types in Speedy. Um, one are the control frames and one are the data frames. Uh, each frame consists of an 8-bit identification header and the first bit on that frame, uh, on that header uh, determines the type of the frame. Zero is for data frame and one is for control frame. <coughs> A data frame looks basically like this. You have the zero um, as the first bit telling you, okay, that's a data frame, and then you have a 31-bit stream ID, which uh, actually tells you to which data stream this data frame correlates. Then you have 8-bit of flex. Um, flex can be used to notify the, the receiver of the frame of several stuff like, okay, this is the last package that I'm going to send you, or uh, this data is compressed, please use gzip to decompress it, and so on. <coughs> The next field is the length, so it's 24 bit. Uh, it's limited at 24 bits, so you, you're likely to, to uh, uh, send multiple data frames if it's a large file. Um, but um, as you can push as much data as you want, it's not really a problem. A data frame may has a length of zero, like if you do requests and uh, the server determines, oh, the file is empty, it will just send you um, a data frame with a length of zero, but with a flag set, and that flag is flag fin, which determines, uh, okay, this is the last frame I will send on the stream. After that, please don't do any requests or don't send me any data on this stream. Um, there are actually two flag types for, uh, for data frames, uh, flag fin and flag compress. All data in Speedy is gzip compressed, so uh, if you, uh, 
if you send an accept encoding header to a speedy application, no matter what you uh, tell the server, it will answer in gzip. You won't be able to enforce it to use bzip or whatever. <coughs> so this is how a control frame um, works. As you can see, the first bit is set one. The next 15 bit are for version checking. Uh, right now we are at version three, um, at least draft three. You're, if you're using Google Chrome with Google services, you're still using draft two, um, which is pretty cool because uh, draft two still has some bugs and some, some cool things in it that allows us to, uh, to hijack sessions and stuff. Um, which is what we see later. The next thing is a 16-bit type. Uh, there are multiple control frame types, like uh, there are control frames for managing streams, there are control frames for sending the settings over to the server, there are control frames for uh, doing some me measurements on the uh, connection, like you can use control frames to do a ping or uh, to measure the round time, to round time trip time, uh, round trip time, sorry. <laughs> Uh -huh. <clears throat> and you can also send 8-bit uh, of flags and, as always, 24-bit lengths of variable data at the end. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, important is that for each control frame type, you can have different flags. Like uh, for, for the stream management uh, control frames, you may have flags that indicate that your stream is unidirectional and so on. So yeah, you may want to keep an eye on that. So speedy streams represent data connections between the client and the server. Um, <coughs> a stream can be uni or, or bidirectional. Um, it basically means uh, if you just want to push data to the server like you're doing video streaming, you'll only have a, a unidirectional data stream to the server because, yeah, what should he answer to you? The cool thing in Speedy is that a stream can be initiated by either the client or the server. So if the server decides, hey, you need, you need new data or, hey, I need to tell you something, the server can just open a stream into your direction and give you the new data. Also, speedy streams can be prioritized. So if you have a large site with um, a large logo or something, you can give the logo very low priority while sending it uh, to the client. So uh, on the web server side, this will lead to optimization on the content delivery. <coughs> Each stream is identified by a 31-bit stream ID and uh, stream IDs are organized just in a normal increasing counting way. Um, if the server initiated the stream, it will, have an, an, uh, <coughs> it will have an even ID, and if the client initiated the stream, it will have an odd ID, which is pretty cool because if you're reading through a network dump of SPUI, you can just, uh, <coughs> you can instantly see, okay, this one was client initiated and this one was server initiated. By the way, it's pretty funny if you just uh, go to server with an, with an even ID because uh, it seems like all implementers totally forgot about uh, this part of the specification and so they will reuse the stream ID for the, uh, their own stuff and you, can, you may, might be able to exploit a specific Apache module if you <coughs> have enough free time. So, uh, stream IDs always start at one. So, uh, if you're a C programmer, you have this, this, yeah, you want to start at zero, but they won't let you. It will instantly reset your connection. Um, <coughs> at least, hopefully. Uh, actually, if you try to initiate uh, or try it, uh, it's already fixed. Uh, a stream with the ID zero against the Google server, you got a very interesting. Uh, error message dump, uh, yeah, you should give it a try maybe. <laughs> Streams are a set initiated and managed using special control frames. So you can't just go and send data frames on a specific stream ID. You have to actually tell the client, okay, I'm now creating a stream. Please tell me if you want to handle it. 
And uh, for that, you have the sim stream control frame. Uh, the one at the end of the title actually determines the number of the uh, control frame type as uh, used in the header. And sim stream initiates a stream from client to server or from server to client. A stream can be associated to an existing stream, like if you, <coughs> if you request the index page from a server, the server may answer you with the index page and also instantly pushes you with other resources like you, you will need the JavaScript, you will need the CSS and the server side will instantly start pushing it to you and associating it to the specific stream. Um, the stream association is also very important if you use a tabbed browser because if you have multiple tabs open to one page, uh, Speedy allows to organize these tabs over a single persistent connection. So uh, one, uh, one tab will be one speedy stream and all sub-resources of the tab will be associated to this single stream. <coughs> um, the flag actually determines, uh, so since stream also has a flag field and uh, the flag on the since stream actually determines if it's any or bidirectional. Uh, right now, the only way to do server push functionality is uh, unidirectional. I don't know exactly why. It kind of sucks, but I'm pretty sure they will change it sometimes. So <coughs> this is how our sin stream looks like in, uh, uh, on your uh, network card. As you can see, um, we have uh, the first bit identifi identifying the frame as a control frame. We have the second part identifying it as a speedy control frame version two. The third one is the type for one for sin stream. The next one is the flag and the 24 bit length uh, identicator. <coughs> Each sin stream has uh, at least 32 bit uh, payload on it. Um, in it you have the stream ID that you want to use. So if you are a client you will start with one. If you are a server you will start with two. Um, you have the optional associated two stream ID. <coughs> and the next fields are three bit for priority. So uh, they actually changed that in draft two. This is still a two bit field so you only had three uh, options for prioritizing your requests. Uh, they changed that to three bits so you can do some final granulation on it. Then we have some unused space and then comes a variable length name value block. This name value block is pretty handy because it's a representation of HTTP headers in Speedy. Um, name value header blocks are always compressed using Zlib uh, with a pre-initialized uh, direct dictionary. So basically, uh, Google determined what are the most common used words in headers and created a dictionary for, these, for the Zlib library which allows the Zlib library to do much better compression than without the uh, dictionary. Also the Zlib stream is persistent so uh, if you send a header to, uh, to your server and you send another one you will use the same Zlib state that's pretty important to notice because that means that if you sniff a connection uh, which is using speedy, you won't be able to just read um, or deflate this uh, compressed header block if you haven't all, um, all the header blocks that were sent before uh, that point. <coughs> In this name value header blocks, it's actually illegal to send two entries with the same name, which was pretty common in HTTP, so you were able to send multiple um, multiple header entries with the same name and a different value. Uh, in, this, in Speedy, the multiple values for the same name are actually separated by a null byte, which is pretty important if your web application happens to use uh, the, same header, uh, the same header name for multiple values at the same time. Uh, you may want to check if, if you switch to Speedy that your Speedy web server does handle this situation right. Um, you actually have the possibility to have uh, a 32-bit high number of name value pairs and <coughs> that means that you can send a lot of data uh, using the headers and it also means that we, we can represent 
all cookie lengths that were poss possible in uh, HTTP. You know, I think in HTTP the uh, cookie size uh, limit lies somewhere by 2K or something, and uh, Speedy actually allows us to uh, go way beyond that limit. <coughs> it's important to notice the separation with null bytes if you have multiple values, but yeah. <coughs> So if you have sent a sin stream request to, uh, to your client or to your server in either direction, um, the other side actually has to uh, confirm uh, that he wants to receive the stream. So that's what the sin reply frame is for, uh, identified by the control frame type number two. It accepts the stream and gives additional data about, uh, <clears throat> like if, if, you're, uh, if your sin stream contained uh, HTTP request, it will give additional data about uh, the data with which it will answer, like content encoding, HTTP status code, etc. Uh, we will take a look in the sniffer at a later point and see what I mean. Uh, the syn reply uh, block is very small. We just have a stream ID and a name value block, um, so pretty straightforward. <coughs> in case of an error like uh, if you are reusing an old stream ID or something, uh, either side will send a reset stream, uh, <coughs> a reset stream control frame, which is only used for the abnormal termination of a stream. If if everything goes well, you will never see a reset stream uh, uh, frame in your sniffer or something. It only happens on very uh, bad uh, situations like unsupported version, uh, if you do a request with speedy version 2 and the server only understands speedy version 3, it will give you an unsupported version error. Um, the reset stream cancel uh, sounds kind of harmless, but it actually means that the other side is not able to handle your request because of resource limitation uh, and so on, so yeah. <coughs> And the reset stream looks like this. Uh, looks like this. Uh, they actually have a 32-bit field for upcoming status codes, so <laughs> expect a very long enumeration list for that. So a normal stream termination uh, works like uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. Works like that. You do a request on on the server, and as soon as you have told the server everything you want you send a frame with the flag fin set. So you say, okay, I'm now done. I'm only waiting for you to tell me that you are done, also done. As soon as uh, you either send or have received a flag fin, the stream is considered half closed. Half closed means that if you resend data on this stream ID, you will get a reset stream error termination. If you want to terminate a session, you can either just uh, kill the TCP connection, which will lead to an error on the client side, or you can use the go away control frame, which is also very simple and just supports two different error messages. One is protocol error and the other one is okay. Um, to give you a better understanding of it, this is how, uh, how a conversation between a speedy server and the client may look like. <coughs> At the top, you have the, the basic TCP and SSL initialization, like client says to server, sin, ak, ak, sin, hey, how are you doing? And <clears throat> if you want to request a site from the server, you initiate a sin stream uh, with the flag fin set because after re the request, you won't send any other data. You just want the server to know, okay, give me that data, that's all. And <clears throat> so you will have a sin stream with the following uh, data in the name value header block, you will have a method like get, post, or head, or whatever. You will have a scheme. The scheme actually determines the, uh, the kind of data representation you want to use, like HTTP or HTTPS, or maybe in the future also other stuff like, who knows, uh, Gopher or something. <laughs> uh, actually, I hope they let go for die, but okay. Um, and for sure, the request URL. The server will reply with a syn reply, hopefully, and will tell you about the content type you, you will receive, 
about the HTTP status code and about the version number. What you see here is actually, <coughs> is actually the HTTP representation on top of, of the framing layer already, uh, which is what we see on the next slides. And after you have received the SYN reply, the server will just send you the data over using several data frames. And on the last frame, it will set flag fin and the stream is considered closed. <coughs> Doing HTTP requests via Speedy uh, is, was pretty broken in old versions because you actually ran into problems uh, where Speedy used uh, reserved words which were already used by other stuff like uh, several web applications uh, used the Sheem header name already. So what Google did was they added the colon at the front of all reserved words <coughs> um, because columns are actually illegal in HTTP headers so they won't uh, collide with any existing applications. An HTTP request in Speedy must have all these method, uh, all these header names set. So you have to tell the server about the method you're uh, using, get or post. You have to tell uh, the server about the path that you're requesting, like slash favicon or just slash or whatever. You have to tell the server about the HTTP version you want to use. Uh, this is, in my opinion, pretty brainless because uh, the only thing you can actually put in there is either HTTP 1.0 or HTTP 1.1 right now, and it doesn't make sense. But okay, you have to send it, so just do it. <coughs> Another thing is you always have to set the host portion of the request, so you you just you can't just do a request like you would do on a on a HTTP. You can do a non-virtual host uh, request without a host and you will got just get the content of the IP, that's illegal and speedy. If you do HTTP via speedy, you always have to supply the host you're requesting this data from. Um, I think this is, is mainly uh, to prevent some nasty stuff, but yeah. And as I said, the scheme is either HTTP or HTTPS right now, but as your session is likely to already use TLS, it will mostly be HTTP. So an HTTP, HTTP response in Speedy looks pretty much the same. You just have two fields that must be present, and that's status and version. Uh, status, like 200 OK or whatever. Uh, 418, I'm a teapot. Um, yeah. <coughs> Interestingly, Speedy also deprecates some HTTP headers, like keep alive, because as soon as you're you are using Speedy, um, the you will use a keep alive connection because that's how Speedy works. You use a single TCP connection and keep it open as long as possible, as long as your resources allow to. It also deprecates the proxy connection header. Um, that's because Speedy has some own proxy stuff integrated. Um, I won't cover the proxy stuff in this talk because it would just be too much and doesn't really matter right now. And another thing is the transfer encoding. Uh, <laughs> that's something that you never should send via Speedy because it's considered a protocol error. Um, as said, implementations must support gzip even if they don't list it in accept encoding. Uh, if your implementation does not support gzip, it's not a Speedy implementation. Um, and that's, that kind of sucks if you try to debug a connection and you just want to, to have it in clear text in your sniffer, you get crazy, uh, trust me. So as said, compatibility with existing applications is guaranteed uh, with the column in front of all reserved names. That's new in draft three. If you use Chromium, you will still use draft two, uh, at least to my knowledge. And yeah, you may get problems if you do it on an existing web application. <coughs> so this is how uh, uh, a real request in uh, Chromium actually looks like. Um, I actually copied this from one of the Chromium help screens because Chromium has some really cool internal sites where you can debug uh, your stuff. Like they will, if you develop with Speedy, they will show you exactly, okay, you sent this syn stream to the server and the server replied with this syn reply. Um, that's what we'll look at, uh, at in 
two minutes or so. And it's pretty cool. And as you can see, <coughs> Chromium actually sends an accept encoding header, why ever, um, even though it's against the standard. Um, and it also submits a host like www.google.com, a method, in this case get, a scheme, and a pass. Uh, the user agent, as it's not reserved, um, is just used as always, and so you can do, continue to use your nasty Internet Explorer 6 uh, convention hacks. Um, yeah, and version HTTP 1.1. <coughs> this is what actually Google will reply if you do that on uh, mail.google.com using uh, a speedy session. Just status 200 OK, HTTP 1.1, and then you will get all the data frames. So, as said, if you want to use speedy, use Chrome or Chromium because that's the only application that actively uses Chromium uh, right now, uh, uses speedy right now. And Chrome comes with some very cool stuff. Um, you can take a look at that. <coughs> like if I start up a, a small speedy server on this machine, uh, something like that on, um, yeah, let's say part 8080. And I now start Chromium with uh, the special option, use SPDY, no SSL. Um, it's Mac OS, it's kind of scary how they try to enforce you to give your application some arguments. You have to use this nasty syntax here. So right now I'm telling uh, Google Chrome to always use speedy no matter what kind of resources he's re re uh, requesting on all connections and not only on HTTPS connections. And <coughs> if I go to my local host on port 8080, I will get a nice message. This is speedy. This is a standard page that uh, the server delivers. And I can show all active speedy sessions in Chrome. Actually, this is kind of buggy. You have to do the request twice before it shows up correctly. But you can see, okay, this is a, the request that Chromium did. You can see that it uh, sends a host header, and you can also see that it's still draft two because it doesn't send a colon in front of it. Uh, you see it uses the scheme HTTP version HTTP 1.1, and you get the stream ID down here. So after you've sent the syn stream request, the server answers with a syn reply and tells you, okay, everything is cool. <coughs> now feel free to go on. Um, and after that, the server just sends you the data over. So, <coughs> um, the reasons I actually uh, worked with Speedy was that a company asked me to do a black box penetration test on their Speedy server implementation. And the lessons learned during that were there are no tools available for doing cool stuff with Speedy. Like, uh, you have to write your own. There's a, a very old uh, uh, yeah, Wireshark plugin that you have to compile against Wireshark source, but it's it's still draft two and it still doesn't support everything and it crashed my machine like a lot of times and yeah, it, it really wasn't nice. Um, but actually there are two cool server implementations. One is NB HTTP, um, a very small Python implementation of Speedy. So if you want to just to do some basic request testing, you should check it out. And there's a server and proxy by Google called Flip in Mem EDSM server. Uh, no idea how they actually pronounce it. It's uh, available in the Chromium source and <coughs> it um, allows you to create a speedy to HTTP proxy. So you can basically request any site using speedy and just get to know the protocol in your network sniffer. Sniffing a speedy session is actually kind of difficult because um, as said, the whole conversation needs to be sniffed because of the header compression. Um, <coughs> the reason is that Zlib uses a stateful compression state. It's basically if you compress a sentence like hello world using Zlib, Zlib will optimize its in-memory dictionary 
uh, for that kind of word. So if you compress Hello World again, it will be even smaller. Too bad that this state is not brute forcible, at least not in reasonable time, because uh, it can, depending on the word size you, you use in Zlib, will be around 2 to 32 kilobytes. Um, so if you have ages of time, feel free, but it won't work. <coughs> so uh, if you don't have the whole conversation, only the data frames will be readable, because there, there's always a single, a single data frame gzip compression and won't be a problem for you to just deflate it. But if you try to sniff a live speedy session, there's actually a way for, uh, for getting the boost sites to reset their compression. Um, speedy has a special flag for data frames called, uh, for header frames called flag reset compression. And flag reset compression is fought to only reset the Zlib cache on the receiving side and only the receiving Zlib state. But actually, at least on my machine, Chromium resets boost states and uh, as such allows you to inject and read all first communication to the server. Um, I wrote Google about that like I think two months ago don't know if they fixed it in a Chromium trunk, but at least for me it still works. Um, yeah, and at that point you can also become man in the middle if you do R poisoning and something and have a lot of fun. Another thing that uh, the company uh, that I was pen testing the implementation of did wrong was speedy cache poisoning. Uh, they were actually vulnerable for a very nasty way of cache poisoning because they didn't check the same uh, they didn't really implement same origin policy for server-side pushes. So if a person goes onto your server with the speedy, um, uh, using speedy, you can actually tell the client that you are like, yeah, I don't know, hugebank.com and that you are actually providing him with a JavaScript for the site and that, it's, uh, that he can keep it in cache for the next three years and you will get all the logins from him, um, which is kind of cool. <laughs> So, but Google actually does everything right here, but it's still just pretty funny. <coughs> so, how can you get going with, uh, with SPDY? Um, because I had to do this, this pen test, I had to implement Speedy, and I decided to create a packet parsing and crafting library for Speedy completely in C. Um, it's open source on a three class BSD license, and right now supports draft two and three. And there are also some Python bindings available, and it's completely transport independent, so you can use it on TLS or uh, on TCP, or if you're crazy, even on UDP or something. And it allows very easy creation of tools that speak speedy, like, <coughs> like we have a namespace called Speedy Easy, where you have a very high level abstraction of all the speedy logic going on underneath, but still cr can create cool stuff like Speedy cr Easy Create Session, with a connection struct where you just supply the IP and the port will get you a session. Speedy easy HTTP request will allow you to do very easy HTTP requests and handle the responses automatically and so on. And there's also speedy easy proxy which allows you to create very small, very specific proxy tools like uh, there's a version of SSL strip available for speedy right now. <coughs> yeah. For those who don't know, uh, SSL strip developed by Moximal and Spike deletes all HTTPS uh, from all requests. So if you request a site like HTTP, Facebook.com, um, and Facebook tries to redirect you to the HTTPS site, it will just remove the redirect. And yeah, there's right now a speedy version for that available. And it's available at libspeedy.org. Check it out. Feel free to give me uh, any further feedback and so on and have fun with it. I'm sorry that we can't do a practical demonstration. At least I've got this great t-shirt and thank you. <laughs> thank you. So if you have any questions or, yeah? There is the uh, there is TLS NPN support, 
uh, next protocol negotiation in uh, SSL available, and that actually allows you to uh, to uh, yeah determine if the server speaks speedy. And there's also uh, the server can also send an alternate pro I think it's X alternate protocol header to inform you that you also speak speedy on a port. Um, Google is the only one working on the protocol right now, but as said, uh, I did a, a black box pen test for a very large corporation which, which plans to use Speedy for some very large projects, and so I hope that we will see first stuff using Speedy. Okay. I can't really see anything, so. Well, um, actually, uh, interestingly, in the speedy draft standard, there's, there's a paragraph exactly about that, but in the other direction. They are like, yeah, how do we prevent the server from doing that with the client? And the solution is, you, if you can't handle any more streams, you can always send a reset stream, or if everything else fails, just send a go away and cut the TCP connection. No, but uh, there are, well, actually, I, I don't know what Google is doing on their side, but uh, right now, most of the server implementations are not even fully uh, standard compliant. So, yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, thank you.